All right, we're back, guys, with our recap of the day seven events. And um, today was a very dramatic day of chess as we go into uh, the rest day tomorrow. The first half of the tournament is over. We've had a bit of a uh, turnaround in the top of the standings because Gukesh, who was leading the tournament along with Nepo, lost a very dramatic game to the tail ender, Ali Reza Ferruja. All the other games ended in draws. In fact, you know, Vidit did have chances against Abastov. Uh, the game between Naka and Nepo was also very exciting right from the get-go. But eventually, Nepo managed to uh, steer it towards a draw. And Fabiano versus Prague never quite went anywhere. Um, and it was an interesting game, but Prague made a comfortable draw. So let's take a look at the standings. We have Nepo at plus two. Four and a half out of seven. He has he has been on this plus two for a long time. Has not been able to get any wins in quite a number of games. Still followed by Caruana, Prague, and Gukesh at plus one. Um, Hikaru drew today, so he's still at fifty percent along with Vidit. I mean, really, only one point separates the fifth to sixth place from the first place. So all of that can be caught up in one round, um, and. Finally, Abbasov and Faruja uh, stemmed the bleeding, stopped losing their games today. Abbasov saved the draw against Vidit, and Ali Reza won the most dramatic game of the tournament so far against uh, Gukesh, which we're going to be showing to you shortly. On the women's side, Lei Tingji was the only winner of the day. Um, she won against Vaishali, a position that we thought Vaishali was doing quite fine in, but somehow as she got into time trouble, things went wrong for her. And the other games featured some end games that ended in draws. So the two games that we're going to be showing you today are going to be between, uh, are they going to be the two decisive games? Meanwhile, Tan, yeah, she's on five points out of seven, plus three. Gariachkina was not able to defeat her today. That was the big matchup of the day. It's, she still has half a point less. And now she's followed by Katarina Logno and Lei Ting Ji. So actually, again, between first place and fourth place is only a one point difference. So anything can still happen with seven rounds of play. Let's get into the games of the day, Vichy. Um, I'm going to be showing you the game between Firuja and Gukesh. So the game started out, let's say, um, with some intentions by Firuja of creating an interesting game. I think that move H4 that he played early on definitely showed that he was trying to uh, create a position that was a little bit unbalanced. But Gukesh was defending well. And let's see, this was their middle point of the game where you can see that you know, white has a buildup of pieces around the black king. There's constant ideas of sacrifices on h6, but black has moved the king away and in general can often use the king to defend that uh, square on h6. Meanwhile, Feruja sacrifices this a5 pawn and then declines the draw. So he could make a move like queen d2, taking on h6 is the threat, forcing something like king h7, and then just a draw by repetition. But he says, no, let's not make the draw. And he gambles with this move c4. Okay, doesn't really change too much because he's still going to have that idea on the board. Now, rook g8 was an interesting try by Gukesh to sort of preempt that sacrifice. So he'll have some options to defend that pawn. And Feruja missed a chance to play this interesting move b4 and suddenly go, gets into a worse position where we thought that he was in some big trouble, um, you know, just down upon his pieces forced to move away from the king side. But then he finds this very interesting resource as he was getting low on time. At this point in the game, he's way lower on time than Gukesh. So he has like four minutes against 15, right? And they have no increments and they still have like 14 moves left to play. So we thought he was in dire straits time-wise for sure. And on the board, he wasn't doing amazing either. Um, Gukesh plays a very attractive sacrifice. Knight takes f2, bringing out the king. And 
trying to exploit the pins. White is pinned in every direction. But Faruja finds the only way to save that knight. Because if he loses the knight, he's going to be down a bunch of pawns with a lost position. He finds the way out of the pin. And Gukash has nothing better than to trade the queens and get into an end game where he has three pawns for the knight. So he's fine. Faruja under two minutes for seven moves. Gukash about five minutes. So still a big time edge for Gukash. We did not think that he was going to be the one to lose on time today. But then look what happens, how the time factor influences the game. He plays a5, rook c7. Faruja was playing quite fast, trying to make it to the time control. His moves are good. Gukash has many options here. He decides to go rook a8, b5, protecting the pawn was also a good option. He goes rook a8, and Faruja finds um, about, in about 30 seconds the best move here, knight d7. Really tricky try because there's a threat of a fork. There's threats of, on the back rank if the black rook can be deflected. And yes, Gukesh spends about a minute out of his 1 minute and 24 seconds on a move that turns out to not be very good. So um, in this situation, he sh should have play this critical move, rook d2 check. That gets him out of the fork. And um, like after white moves the king back, then what was the move here that black could do, Vishy? Um, was, was it, it uh, king g8 or king h7? It was one of these, I think. Is it not just rook d8? Yeah, that also. Could there was something played. slightly better, yeah. Yeah. Maybe B5. Yeah, there was actually a lot of options. So basically, he needed to give the check just so that there wouldn't be a fork. Okay. So instead of that, he plays king h7. The point of this was that he wants to push this pawn without it getting captured and there being a check on the back rank. I mean, I can see how that might have seemed attractive, but Faruja plays rook f3, and then he plays this move which basically ends the game at this point Faruja has 14 seconds gukesh has 23 seconds he plays a3 and then he just gets made it he still had a chance to stay alive here with this check or at least you know not making it so easy for white to win you know because i think there's a difference here in all these moves and with Faruja having 14 seconds no guarantee at all that he would find the best one um, so, but he tries to run with the pawn and unfortunately he finds himself in a mating net. Now there's no way out. The black king is getting mated. The pawn, uh, he tried to get out of knight of six check and, or maybe, yeah, probably knight of six was a threat. So king h8, then knight of eight, Faruja found in six seconds. And the threat is knight g6, which really can't be stopped. You can't even really sack your rook because it's going to be a check. And then this pawn can be rounded up, or maybe there's going to be a checkmate threat with rook c8. So the game ended with this check. And Gukesh lost on time as he was about to get checkmated. And of course, the irony was that even though he had a lot more time than Ali Reza, um, in the end, he wound up losing on time because of the lack of increments. So it was such a dramatic last minute of their game where it was not even obvious if, you know, how the players would make the time control, let alone what would be the position on the board at the time. And in the end, you know, Ali Reza, Ali Reza's gamble, it paid off and he wound up winning this equal end game. Okay. What were your feelings, Vishy, watching this? That was a roller coaster. Um... Let's look at uh, Lei Tingji, who won the only game in um, the women's section. So the opening had this pretty moment when uh, the four knights ended up on uh, e4. So you have this lovely square in the center. And um, it seemed black can probably take on d4 in multiple moments. But uh, the finish was interesting. So they got here. 
Elite Ng went knight b5, and Vaishali could have played queen e7. After queen b8, in fact, there's a very beautiful win. Queen takes d5, rook takes d5, knight f6, gf6, rook e8. And black is actually ahead on material, but that queen is just boxed in and trapped. But um, she captured there and took here, bishop e6. And amazingly, Vaishali has one last chance to turn this game around. After bishop b3, rook d8, rook e8 check, king h7, white is not even better. So a second opportunity, which she didn't take advantage of. And after rook d8, queen c3, the game was over. So tough day for Vaishali, but Li Ting Jingji manages an impressive comeback and uh, she's now also on plus one. Yeah, so two decisive games only today, but certainly not a lack of drama. I feel like this game between Faruja and Gukesh, first of all, it had enormous significance for the tournament standings as it does take down uh, the leader Gukesh a little bit lower to a plus one score. It allows Nepo to be in sole first place with a plus two score. Also, it gives Faruja some confidence as he heads into the second half of the tournament after two tough losses uh, to Hikaru Nakamura and to Vidit. And it also gave the fans a chance to see what chess is like without the increment and how desperate and dire you know, it can feel um, when you're trying to make the time control without that increment and how a perfectly reasonable position can just get destroyed by move 40. But yeah, there was a lot of emotion in that game and certainly a treat for the chess fans. So we're done with the first half, guys. Tomorrow is a rest day. We will be back on, I have no idea what day it is actually. <laughs> what, what, what day are we on, Vishy? Well, 7, April 11th, that'd be a clue. <laughs> okay. And so the free day is tomorrow, April 12th. And we'll see you on Saturday, April the 13th for round eight. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for helping me with that part because I, I was completely lost on that. So we'll see you guys in two days for rounds number eight and so much more exciting chess here in Toronto.